Hi guys. It is a lovely moonlit night. A lovely moonlit night here in the fall of 2022. Feels a little bit like summer tonight here in New York, baby. On Friday night, November 4th, 2022. So being Friday, we all know what that is. And don't ask me where I'm getting the energy to do this, guys. It is time for our weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where we return once again to mongabay.com for their weekly laundry list of their cavalcade of catastrophe spiraling down on this collapsing planet and gee uh no better place than uh, to start one of those. I guess this is, uh, well, you would think in China, but it's pretty much for anywhere where China goes, where there's sharks. You will not believe this. Shark finning is rampant across Chinese tuna firms fleet. This is Dalian Ocean Fishing Incorporated used banned gear to deliberately catch and illegally cut the fins off huge numbers of sharks in international waters. Yes, just five of the company's longline boats harvested roughly 5.1 metric tons of dried shark fin from the western Pacific Ocean in 2019. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but we're talking dried. Anybody who knows about psilocybin mushrooms will know a little bit what that means. Five metric tons equates to a larger estimated shark catch than what China reported for the entire nation's entire long line fleet in the same time and place. Wow. The findings are based on dozens of interviews with men who work throughout the company's fleet of 35 long line boats. Yes. Lord, we're going to talk more about long lines in a minute, I think. Uh, we are not talking about hopium, and we're not talking about because uh, I'm boycotting. Uh, uh, so, uh, trying to steer around that. I think we already had this story last week about the hilarious notion of halting, halting forest destruction for palm oil, asking the question, is there, is there any such thing as zero deforestation palm oil? To ask the question, is there such a thing, or could there be such a thing, I guess, as zero deforestation Palm oil is, I don't know, what would be a good uh, comparison to that moronic question? You know, uh, is there a chipmunk harassment, a chipmunk harassment, a zero chipmunk harassment little dog on this table? The very notion of zero deforestation palm oil is an oxymoron, and I'm embarrassed that Rhett Butler is even acting like this is a serious question. Okay. Speaking of uh, <laughs> moronic questions, I love it when there's a when they ask a headline. The question being. Is natural gas, is natural gas the solution to Africa's energy needs? Well, they do answer the question here, no. But the answer to the question is no, 
but the solution is to Africa's energy needs is the solution to every one of Africa's other problems. And we'll just leave it at that for now. I love this one. Small island, big ocean. Ni the island of Niue makes its entire, you know, every bit of area that it owns in the ocean a marine park. A marine park. Niue, a small island nation, never heard of, this is a nation, Niue, designated its entire exclusive economic zone an area about the size of Vietnam as a multiple use marine park. Multiple use marine park. So what percent of the marine park is slated for commercial fishing and other activities including deep sea mining? If your answer was 56% uh, of the marine park going for commercial fishing and deep sea mining, give yourself a gold star. Yes. Uh, Jesus, these marine park. Come on, please. All right. I'm surprised it was such a small article. Bozo Nero loses election but finds big support in Amazon Arc of Deforestation. Okay. Hi, ear. Bozo Nero was defeated in his re-election bid against former President Lula. Uh, Bozo, however, won in eight of the ten Brazilian municipalities with the biggest deforestation rates in the Amazon forest last year. He won in the majority of towns in the arc of deforestation, which accounts for about 75% of the deforestation in the Amazon. Uh, good luck, Lula, saving the Amazon. We will say, but hats off, Trump hats off to Lula, or uh, we will see if Lula is going to save the planet or not. All right, we were just talking about uh, the Chinese illegal fishing abuses. You will be glad to know that, quote, there are solutions to these abuses. Yes, yes, yes. There are solutions to Chinese overfishing abuses. They are the same solutions to the energy needs for Africans. But we will leave it at that. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Guys, I, you, you, you know, uh, all, all you can do is laugh. Honduran Forest Governance Agreement. Honduran Forest Governance Agreement brings cautious, brings cautious, cautious, hope. We have cautious hope from a Honduran forest governance agreement. Yes, a timber trade agreement that aims to ensure that Honduras exports only legally harvested timber products in the EU is the first of its kind to go into force in the Americas. We're getting back to the old... Uh, who was it who, I think it was Philip Fernside, you know, talking about the, the way to 
you know, make illegal forest, illegal deforestation, legal deforestation is to make illegal for deforestation, legal deforestation, and then you have no illegal deforestation where there's not a goddamn bit of difference between legal or illegal deforestation. Okay? There's no such a thing as the difference. Deforestation is deforestation. If you don't want to have illegal deforestation, you make it legal. So we now have Honduras calling it legal deforestation. It's now legal to, uh, you know, smash. Is there any forest still left in Honduras? I think maybe over there on the East Coast. Anyway, <clears throat> under the framework, a timber legality assurance system currently under development, yes, currently under development, uh, which means changing the name of illegal deforestation to legal deforestation. This is what a timber legality assurance system currently under development means. But it will be the backbone of licenses for the export of legal timber. Yes. Indigenous groups that took part in negotiations leading up to the agreement say they uh, say they uh, they uh, they uh, oh. Yes, the deal will spur action to address illegal logging and land grabs. I'm sure it will address it. It will uh, give uh, land grabbers free reign. Land grabbers in Honduras. Okay. Hopium, hopium, hopium. Okay. I absolutely love it, all the questions that they ask. They're asking the question, who decides on priorities for ecosystem restoration? <laughs> it's, the, it's the same guys who decide on everything else. You know exactly who decides on it. It's the global corporatocracy, you know, dividing it up. Uh, who decides on priorities for ecosystem restoration? I think it's the, what is it, as George Carlin would say, it is one big club and you ain't in it. All right. It is another winter of discontent in Kathmandu. Yes. As it braces for deadly air pollution. Hmm. Anyway. Okay. More hopium. Well, I've been hearing all about avocado farming you know, sucking all the water out of Mexico. Well, now the avocado farmers have moved south to Colombia where they are sucking all of the water out of Colombia. Yep, yep, yep. Colombia is now second to Mexico as the world's top avocado producer with a significant up tick in production last year, resulting in socioeconomic and environmental impacts. Do you know where that avocado we had last night came from? Was it from Colombia or Mexico? Mexico. It was a Mexican. 
Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. You're not sure huh. whether we're taking now Mexico or Colombia. We, well, anyway, we apologize for the uh, guacamole we had last night. If you were some noble savage dying of thirst because of that avocado, we do apologize. What is all this in your tail? Okay, now we're getting to, uh, I think, the title quote of this. We have two articles about, I've actually mentioned this thing, this new East African crude oil pipeline. Good Lord, uh, is there, you know, ramping up uh, oil drilling over there in sub-Saharan Africa. And you will not believe this, as banks fund, you know, this new sub-Saharan African oil pipeline, campaigners question their environmental pledges. Yes. When fully operational, crude oil following through the pipeline will generate 34 million metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions each year. Okay. And then we have next to that a commentary by Dickens Kamugisha. Dickens Kamugisha, who is saying about how East Africa should promote renewable energy, not oil pipelines. Yes. Despite likely negative effects on wildlife, forests, rivers, and the climate, the pipeline proponents say the project will benefit the region's people. Do these arguments hold water? A new op-ed by Dickens, Kamagusha, says no. Quote, Traditionally, Africans have lived in harmony with nature. Traditionally, Africans have lived in harmony with nature. They should continue to do so by championing renewable energy over risky projects such as the pipeline. The writer argues this post is a commentary. The views expressed are those of the author, not necessarily of Manga Bay. Dog, what is all this you've got in your tail? Good Lord. I'm just going to have to get the scissors to your tail. Cut your tail. I'm just going to cut your tail off with the scissors. Anyway. Traditionally, Africans have lived in harmony with nature. All right. I actually saw this one. Uh, in the mainstream media, now I know, guys, this is brushing up with, uh, 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 and uh, so I'm just going to leave that out, uh, you know, trying to avoid talking about, uh, uh, I'm doing my best, but anyway, how are we going to, we just won't mention it. There is not enough land on Earth to meet many of the world's climate pledges, says New Study. National climate pledges would collectively require 1.2 billion hectares, otherwise known as 3 billion acres of land. Researchers have found in a new study called the Land Gap Report. More than half of this land is already currently used for something else. The demands for land, you know, to fix the climate uh, will put pressure on ecosystems 
indigenous lands, small farmers, and food security. Yes. Not enough land on the planet to save the planet. We got a problem here when there's not enough land on the planet to save the planet. Do the math. Okay. All right, how are we going to word this one? Hmm, we have to very carefully... New report says leaders vow to slow forest loss rings hollow. Countries are nowhere close to meeting the goal of ending deforestation by 2030, a new assessment shows. Here is the, uh, this one is right up there with Africans living in harmony with nature. Indonesia, Indonesia is the only country, the only country on this planet that is moving in the right direction. You know, when, uh, when Indonesia is being held up as a poster child of, <laughs> of, uh, of fighting deforestation, uh, you know, I, I think we all know what that means. When, when, they, when you search the planet for the poster child of environmental protection, and you come up with Indonesia as the, as the most successful country on the planet, saving the planet from cutting down rainforests. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> the world... Okay. Again, uh, now this, uh, we've been through this rant before. I don't need to go th through it here. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to move on. Okay. And uh, right next to it is talking about how Norway is paying Indonesia all of this money to stop deforestation. There you go. <laughs> Uh, who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Federal canines, federal, feral, feral canines pose a threat to Nepal's chipmunks. Hmm, maybe you want to move to Nepal, the log. All right. Uh... Okay, we have our little, uh, I like this little new sub-Saharan African roundup that they started a few weeks ago at Mogenbeck. These little snippets from around sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, we're going to start in Cameroon. Conservationists have flagged logging activity by a company in Cameroon that is clearing forest near a national park in apparent breach of its permits. Hmm. Then we're going to move from Cameroon to the coast of Ivory. Yes. Uh, talking about deforestation for new cocoa plantations. I just had a Nice bowl of chocolate ice cream probably came from the coast of Ivory. Uh, here is some tree you've never heard of in Malawi. Oh boy. Okay, we have some more hopium. Shipping lane change could be sea change for Sri Lanka's blue whales. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, more 
Hopium. Uh, you will not believe that fishermen in Bangladesh are still waiting for the compensation they were promised by the government during a three-week ban on Hilsa fishing, whatever that means. They were supposed to, the fishermen who agreed not to fish for these endangered fish were promised 88 pounds of rice. 88 pounds of rice if they agreed not to go fishing for the Hilsa fish. They're still waiting for their rice. <sighs> okay. Now, I wish they had asked the question, why are fish disappearing from Amazonian waters? But they make it a statement, why fish are disappearing from Amazonian waters. The reason fish are disappearing from Amazonian waters is because of humans living near Amazonian waters. If there were no humans living near Amazonian waters, fish would not be disappearing from Amazon. So the answer, if it were a question, would be humans. But since people don't want to admit what the answer to any question is, which is humans, what was the quote, speaking of Amazonian uh, fish, our waiter at, at dinner tonight, Carcass. Yeah. People, people are piranhas. People are piranhas. I have my own carcass to consume. This was our friendly waiter. People are piranhas. I have my own carcass to consume. So maybe he was the young man who wrote uh, this article, Why Fish Are Disappearing from Amazonian Waters. Uh, okay, from the coastline all the way inland to freshwater streams, people living in Amazon, you know, people, you know the people in living there, say industrial fishing, otherwise known as humans, deforestation, otherwise known as humans, hydroelectric dams, otherwise known as humans, and climate change, eh, probably otherwise known as humans, have reduced fish populations. Industrial fishing is one of the main explanations for the low numbers. Fishermen, you know, the local little guys report that large boats are trawling, you know, off the coast of where the Amazon comes out with up to 30, with nets up to 30 kilometers. That's 18.6 miles in length. 18 mile long fishing nets. Oh, God. All right. There we go. Let's just have one more. I've got to get to bed, guys, and I'm about done with my drink. Here we go. To save threatened Amazon primates in Brazil, turn them into the main attraction. There you go. Primates along the southern portion of Brazil's Amazon frontier, a region known as the Ark of Deforestation, are being pushed to the brink of extinction as vast swaths of their habitats are cleared. Yes, here is this newest one, Vera's Titi Monkey. 
has now been labeled critically endangered and researchers say other primates face a similarly perilous situation. All right, but we have a solution. Conservationists say investing in primate-based ecotourism based on the established model of the bird watching industry could provide an effective conservation solution. I don't know how many of you have ever been to the Amazon rainforest as I have and other rainforests trying to see a monkey in the Amazon rainforest. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> and then I think the bird watchers what they do is in there like like 800 species of birds in the Amazon rainforest and there's like 20 species of monkeys uh, but anyway we're going to save the monkeys by just making monkey watchers get out there and watch the monkeys while you still can to save the planet but anyway, guys, uh, I could go on with this, but I keep looking over at this at this ad for this T-shirt. I don't know what this means. The, is it the slogan on the T-shirt? I smell like last season. Her championship. Jersey, I smell like last season. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll have to get the the t-shirt and you can tell me what it means. Yes, little dog. It will be 72 degrees tomorrow. The low tomorrow night on November 5th in Ithaca, New York is 64 degrees. All right, little dog, I'm going to go get the scissors and cut your tail off. Bye, guys. Ugh. Yes, I think the scissors are right outside the door, little dog.